I created a monster. You can draw anything in the whole world. I'm lacking a bit of motivation today, I have to admit. I was missing a bit of sleep the last day, so I thought, okay, let's have a little self-care and just give yourself a little more sleep. But do you know these days when you kind of sleep long, but actually it doesn't make you feel so much better? Well, that's what I'm having today, um, but still it's Monday. And since I had this drying problems with my oil paint last week, I decided that I will just first do the oil painting, then it already has some time to dry on my canvas, so the process is hopefully faster. For this portrait, I learned a new method called Monster Portrait. I had to block in the highlights, midtones and darks with only 8 rough brush strokes to create a scary looking creature. I created a monster! <laughs> To give a little more structure to the painting and define the person a little, the second step was to subtract the outlines with the silicon tool. The first layer of my oil painting is done. <laughs> and yeah, it was tough again because like I feared the paint already started to dry before I was able to subtract the thing, so I kind of had to mess around with the painting a bit, but in the end now I have some weird looking uh, guy out there, so I guess I can work with this. I don't know what happened, it's freezing cold today. I also don't want to turn on the heater yet, <laughs> so I guess I'm just gonna get a nice thing to wear on top and then start painting. So the first thing I will do is just check again if my proportions are on the spot. As planned I started to remeasure my outlines. For this I focused on the left eye and compared everything else to it including the length, angle and where it lines up. As I thought my proportions were slightly off in most of the places, so I took a dark color and softly sketched the right outlines in. Afterwards, it was time for the first skin colors. This exercise was all about painting planes and seeing where the planes shift. I wasn't allowed to blend everything together and create a smooth surface, but laying big bold brush strokes down and leave them just like that, so each brush stroke would resemble a plane of the face. This was pretty hard for me since naturally I just want to blend everything and bring it closer to a realistic look, even though it doesn't necessarily look better. This exercise was so tough for me. Throughout the whole process I felt so uncomfortable and it was so hard for me to see these plane shifts. So right now this painting still has to dry. Suddenly the winter really kicked in here with this much colder temperature. I think also the oil paint needs to dry longer, so we will see about that. But first I have other classes to do in between, drawing classes which also will help me learn about plane shifts more. You are going to learn plane shifts today. Now, everything is a plane shift, not just boxes. 
uh, but of course today you're gonna draw a cardboard box. Many experts say that if you can draw a cardboard box correctly, you can draw anything in the whole world. The first exercise is to build up this card box frame. So yeah, let's see what I can find. I want to have these open card box sides, so I'm just going to cut this one open. Hey, more canvases! <laughs> this little stuffed mouse I got from a friend a few years ago, <laughs> if you're watching, thank you again. Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty good object for me to draw. I found it pretty cute. Also, I really like mice, I have to say. I also used to have some as pets and oh my god, they can be so cute and pretty intelligent. <laughs> Since I also really miss having pets at home, I think this will just be a pretty nice exercise for myself, for my soul. <laughs> I found a spot for my mouse in my composition, checked the lighting and also put a mark onto the ground where I should put my feet so that I keep the same distance to the object all the time. Then it was time to bring out my charcoal pencils and scale tool. Using willow charcoal I had to create a mid-tone base layer. I found that using a tissue worked great to smooth everything out. On top I drew the outlines, sketching everything with my scale tool. When the outlines were done, I started to give more depth to the drawing while just working on the highlights. Therefore, I mostly used my kneaded eraser for bigger areas and the mechanical eraser pen for smaller details. That was it for the day, since I had to do a little more things, I came back to this drawing on Friday. I started the morning off with giving the final touches to my card box drawing, which were my darks. Using my charcoal pens, I slowly worked my way from creating the midtones to drawing the darkest details and refining the edges. I also worked a bit on the background to create a bigger contrast and make the image pop out more. As the final step, I switched to a white charcoal pen to highlight the brightest spots. Finally, this exercise is done. Now there are just two exercises left. One more charcoal portrait actually, and one more session on the oil painting. But before that, I just wanted to share two things with you. The first thing is that I received a letter. It's this letter here. It's from the tax office. It's pretty important to me for my small business that I just started in September with the painting. I just received my tax ID which I will need to put on bills and stuff so <laughs> officially uh, now I'm allowed to sell my art. Woo! <laughs> but anyways the second thing let's just get to that. I received this package, so it's time to unpack. We're just gonna do it together. Look at how big it is! <laughs> Amazing! Um, yeah, <laughs> in case you're wondering what I'm gonna use this big uh, piece of plexiglass for. It's gonna be my new pedals because my other one here um, 
got a bit too small for me somehow while painting with oils. I kind of needed more space to not mix all of the cools and warms somewhere together in the middle. So yeah, this hopefully will do a better job on that case. And the other one I think I'm just gonna keep to work on acrylic paints. Nice one. That looks good. I watched the next drawing class but noticed that I didn't have that much time anymore because of dinner plans. So I ended up learning about editing raw photos instead so that I can offer high quality art prints in future. this exercise today we have a time limit again. I'm supposed to just use one and a half hours, which is not that much to produce a whole portrait. So this is a continuation of the planes and cardboard box lesson, um, but now you're gonna do a portrait um, and you're gonna use charcoal again. If you look at the source here, I want you to pay attention to how it's sort of like a cardboard box. I don't know why you're breathing in my friend But you've got to breathe it out before you choke I wish come back to Nashville meant that I was on your mind I wish you'd say it with that look you get when she walks by I don't always feel like this, it's just sometimes I think that I wish you'd say come back to Nashville but mean come back to me well that's my timer time is up okay so I will stop right now so that's the piece of the one and a half hours I have to say I <laughs> cheated a bit and just erased some fine hairlines afterwards but just took like a few seconds, so I hope that counts. If I compare it now to the source, I can see that my proportions are a little off, like it doesn't look completely like the person I wanted to draw, but it comes pretty close and I think if you look like this, it's actually like works together. I guess somehow I followed the basic rules of drawing a portrait. So I think for one and a half hours, of course, could be better, but I think I can be satisfied with it. So what I will do now is just taking my fixative spray and spray it all over my drawings that I produced in the Master Rain program so far. That will just prevent all the charcoal and graphite to just smudge around so I can store them easier and that will just make sure that everything stays in place where it should be. Apparently it's raining, so I guess I shouldn't hold the drawings too far out of the window. So I ordered this pretty cheap funnels. I want to reuse my brush cleaner. I let all the pigment settle down so I can pour the clean transparent liquid that is on top um, just back into my brush cleaner bottles. Yeah, for this I need this funnel. But enough of preparation, let's start finally with the last layer of this painting and finish week three. In this painting session I basically followed the rules that I already knew from the second session. The only difference was that I had to refine my portrait more, so my plane shifts got smaller and smaller too. It is just crazy how colorful normal skin can be. I basically had the colors of the rainbow on my palette. So pro tip number one. If you want to give more depth to your paintings, look closely and figure out the actual colors and don't just assume that, for example, a face just needs brownish and beige colors. Fun fact at the side, I let my boyfriend choose most of the sources for my lessons. Since that gives a new perspective and makes me paint things I might would have never considered to paint. 
With this painting he said it would be interesting to see how I create these dark colors and at the same time make the face shine that much. And he was right, that creating such big contrast and also working with darker skin colors was a pretty new and good experience. Also, it's the first man I ever painted, so cheers to that! So the third week of the mastery program is done and I can definitely say it was the most challenging for me so far. Um, but I also feel like through this constantly learning, constantly trying new methods and techniques, I can see and feel that I'm slowly improving and it's really nice to see this progress. So with the drawing I think I'm still slow and of course still there's room to improve. But I feel like I'm getting slowly more comfortable with the scale tool and also just eyeballing and seeing these proportions and what is important, what you should focus on. Even though my proportions were maybe a little off, doing this short time exercises really helped this process. And then we had this oil painting again, which was the trickiest exercise for me because we had this plane shift we had to focus on. First I was so confused and generally took me much longer than I should take on this exercise. I feel like in the end with the third layer I got much more comfortable already with just seeing these plane shifts and just letting them be how they are and it kind of got fun and I have to say I really enjoy this painting style. It just gives so much more life I feel. Also this was the last exercise I did last year and even there I didn't finish it completely. You can see also here my proportions are off, like the eyes are not lining up that well and I also blended the things much more. Even though this is of course not finished, I already see that there was such a big difference to the guy I painted this time. So far for this week I think it taught me a lot and yeah, that's all I want. <laughs> the rest is practice. I had a dream, the sun was shining all on your face and on mine too, and our favorite place.